dear students uh, so we are going to discuss today uh, uh, behavioral performance management or otherwise uh, we call it uh, organizational behavior modification So this comes under like you know how to manage and lead high performance organizations um, in order to do that we have studied the ways and means of doing job designs and goal setting and today we are going to look at the behavioral management part of the organizational behavior so uh, i'm going to uh, you know the, the the learning objectives of today's lecture is to first to define the theoretical processes of uh, learning behavioral and cognitive and social and then we are going to discuss the principles of reinforcement uh, the both side of it in a positive and negative reinforcement and with special attention given to the law of effect and also we are going to look at what is punishment also we are going to analyze the organizational reward systems emphasizing both uh, monetary and non financial rewards finally i'm going to present some steps and results of behavior management so what is organizational behavior modification how are we going to achieve uh, you know performance management through behavioral science so let's look at the slide 6 So what are the behavior modification techniques There are five categories of activities that can be addressed with behavior modification techniques What are those five categories So we can develop a uh, new behavior We can strengthen the existing behavior if it is a good behavior or we, we can maintain that established behavior you know so if it is very good and then we can maintain it you know or we can stop the inappropriate behavior of the employees you know or modify emotional behavior so there are five categories of activities that can that can be addressed with behavior modification Uh, developing a new behavior strengthening a behavior maintaining established behavior stop inappropriate behavior and modify emotional behavior so you all are agreed you know with me um when you are working for a organization uh, it is like a carrot and a stick uh, so there are in organization there are carrots hanging in you know so you go for those carrots you know but if your behavior is not good not appropriate so we use the stick to control your behavior so it's a carrot and a stick situation you know so we want to develop new behaviors in order to get better performance and help the employees to grow also we are interested in strengthening the good behaviors you know and maintaining the established good behaviors and if there are in up uh, in inappropriate behaviors we want to stop those behaviors so we can use different techniques uh, to do this behavior modification so behavior modification uh, we operate on the environment we can alter behavior to maximize positive and minimize adverse consequences we will look at you know what are those behavioral classifications like operant and classical uh, behaviors you know and then we we'll look at the law of effect like could that an operant behavior will be repeated depending on the consequences Now when you look at these um, uh, behavioral learning theories you know there are basically uh, uh, you know two types of behaviors behavioral theorists uh, identified in behavior uh, area you know one is called classical theories you know other ones are operant theories you know So one of the Russian um, uh, you know social psychologists Ivan Pavlov 
an American John Watson they have studied the behaviors of animals and humans and they said there is a classical conditioning you know there's a connection between a stimulus and response uh, I will explain that in little more detail in slide 9 so when you give a stimulus there is a response so let's look at a couple of examples you know if you stuck by a pin you know what what is the response it finches you know if it is tap below the kneecap if someone tap below the kneecap you know it flexes and lower the leg you know if you get a shocked electric shock you either scream or you jump if you are surprised by a loud noise you again scream or jump you know so this is when you give a stimulus you respond so the stimulus response it's a classical conditioning so there's another one we call it a operate uh, operant conditioning that's when you give them a response you know you get stimulated you know now let's say you're going to work for an organization you know from the day one you're not going to get paid you know from the day one you can't ask for a salary so when you work at the end of the month or the payday they will make the payment you know but you work without the stimulus you know stimulus you get it later that is because this operant conditioning involved with learning so uh, then the classical condition so more involvement of learning is there in the operant conditioning so you know that in your father grandfather all of them you know worked and then got paid you know and you talk to the others meet more people so you enter to a restaurant you know what is the stimulus you are going to get it obtain some food so you enter to the library find the book you know so it's operant conditioning so increase productivity you can get a merit pay you complete a difficult assignment receive praise and a promotion so uh, this operant conditioning always involved with greater learning than the classical conditioning so both are true so we behave in uh, according to the classical conditioning as well as operant conditioning you know. so good old days this was researched by a Russian Ivan Pavlov uh, using dogs you know so he did a small simple surgical procedure uh, to insert a, uh, you know uh, a test tube you know and measure the segregated saliva of the dog you know so he start producing the food so then the dog started segregated saliva so every time when he give food it segregated the saliva you can measure that spit by the spittle by the test tube measurement so then what he has done is he has added when you are producing the food he has added some uh, 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 different you know uh, uh, metronome you know the sound you know so every time you add the sound and uh, then you produce the food so do dog realize connection between the sound and the food you know so after that even if you create that sound if you don't even give food dog started segregating the saliva you know. so that means dog started learning that the connection between that stimulus and the response so let me just um, show you a small video that was an attempt to um, reproduce that old experiment let me see that I will show it to you now uh, the Pavlov uh, classical conditioning Pavlov's aim was to discover what caused saliva to flow. He rerouted the saliva ducts to the outside of his dog's cheek so that he could collect and measure the spittle. 
Perhaps, he thought, the production of saliva might be the result of a fixed nervous reflex, like a knee jerk. After taking many measurements of spittle, he confirmed that the dogs drooled automatically when their tongues touched food. He called the response the salivation reflex. But his work started to run into trouble. As his dogs became familiar with the experimental routine, they started to fill their cheek tubes before Pavlov had a chance to stimulate their tongues. The dogs were learning to anticipate food. Pavlov tried a new technique. He erected screens so that the dogs couldn't see what was going on. Before passing meat through the hatch, he introduced a stimulus that was totally unrelated to feeding. A ticking metronome. At first, the dog dripped saliva into its cheek tube only when the food appeared. But after a number of trials, the dog began to connect the ticking with the arrival of meat. Soon, the sound alone made the dog drool. Eventually, the dog salivated as much to the ticking itself as it did originally to the presentation of food. He called this new response the conditioned reflex. Whatever the stimulus, his dogs could soon be conditioned to produce saliva. Pavlov believed that he had discovered how animals learned, even in the wild. So you have seen this experiment by Ivan Pavlov. And then also I will show you another video on Skinner's experiment um, on operant conditioning. So in this case he used pigeons and operant, operant conditioning means you give them a response and then you receive they receive the stimulus. You know. So let me now show you uh, the Skinner's operant conditioning. Can pigeons read? This one gives every indication because he's been taught to distinguish between two words and to behave appropriately. He's learned his different response to each sign by being rewarded with food. So the bird isn't acting independently. Its behavior is shaped by controlling its environment. The first task was to isolate an individual piece of behavior and see how that could be changed. Skinner did this by keeping individual pigeons at about three quarters of their normal weight so that the birds were always hungry and food could be used as an automatic reward. The pigeon was studied in a uniform box, one it quickly grew used to. One piece of behavior, pecking a colored disc, was measured on a graph. Pigeon learned that pecking the disc produced a reward. Then the behavior of pecking could be studied in relation to how often that reward was offered, or in Skinner's terms, what was the schedule of reinforcement. The main thing is what's what we call schedules of reinforcement. Reinforcement is what the layman calls reward, and you can schedule it uh, so that 
A reward occurs every now and then when a pigeon does something. We usually use a response with a pigeon pecking a little disc, a little spot in the wall, and you can reinforce with food. But you don't reinforce every time. You every perhaps every tenth time, or perhaps only once every minute, or something like that. There are a very large number of, of schedules, and they have their uh, special effects. And there is a good example of how you can move from uh, the uh, the pigeon to the human case, because one of the one of the schedules which is very effective with with rats or pigeons is what we call the variable ratio schedule, and that is at the heart of all gambling devices and has the same effect. A pigeon can become a pathological gambler just as a person can. Now, the fact that we found that out with pigeons and could prove it by removing and changing the schedule makes it easy for us to interpret the case with, with, with human, the human subject. We, we don't say that the, the human subject uh, gambles to punish himself, as the Freudians might say, or gambles because he feels excited when he does so, nothing of, nothing of the sort. People gamble because of the schedule of the reinforcement that follows, and this is true of all gambling systems. They all have variable ratios built into them. So what we've learned from the pigeon, it made it possible to interpret this vast field very effectively. Where does that leave free will? Because we all think we have a choice whether to do things or not to do things. Yes. Well, you see, we, it leaves it in the position of, of a fiction. We, we have uh, assumed somehow or other that these internal states, feelings, and so on, have initiated something. They have started something. They have created. We, 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 we have done something in, vo in a voluntary way. We have willed to act. If you now look at the actual history, we find that there are external reasons why this has happened. In other words, by discovering the causes of behavior, we, we can dispose of the imagined internal cause. We dispose of free will as a, an American divine of the 18th century, Jonathan Edwards, did. He said, we believe in free will because we know about our behavior, but not about its causes. And of course, it's, a sci it's, it's the, the object of a science of behavior to discover causes. And once you have found those causes, there is less you need to attribute to an internal act of will, and eventually, I think, you need to attribute nothing to it. Okay. So let's uh, look at the next slide. Uh, uh, you can see that operant conditioning has much more greater impact to human learning than the classical conditioning. Let me show you another small um, experiment by uh, Skinner, that's called Skinner's box, you know, to illustrate the operant conditioning. Now let's look at the uh, ABCs of behavior modification. So ABCs, uh, we call it um, antecedents, behavior, and consequences. You know. 
So first we look at what happens be, uh, before behavior. And then it it's leads to the actual, you know, what person say or does, you know, the behavior. And then it leads to consequences, what happens after the behavior, you know. For example, um, attendance bonus system is announced, you know. So that's called antecedent, you know. And then employ attend schedule work. Then the employees show that behavior because of attendance bonus system. Then what's the consequences? Employee receives attendance bonus. So this is called ABCs of behavior modification. So if you are interested in modifying the behavior, we can apply this uh, behavior modification methods. Now we are using, in order to do um, behavior modification, we use this term reinforcement. This term reinforcement and the reward are often used interchangeably and loosely but neither one is operationally defined you know but it has its two meanings you know the rewards and reinforcements are not the same so reinforcement is behavior management which is defined as anything that both increases the strength and tend to introduce repetition of behavior so reinforcement means increasing the strength and it leads to repetition of the behavior. So we can do this reinforcement in two ways. One is called positive reinforcement and other one is called negative reinforcement. So we will look at both in later. The rewards are simply something that person who presented deemed to be desirable. So the two terms are slightly different you know reinforcement and rewards so in the next slide you can see reinforcement can be positive or negative but it strengthen the behavior and increase the probability of repetition whether it is positive or negative so but positive and negative reinforcers accomplish this impact on behavior in a completely different way now positive reinforcement always strengthens and increases the behavior by presentation of desirable consequences. So that's going to increase the behavior. The repetition will be increases his behavior and uh, uh, by presenting a desirable consequences. But negative reinforcement strengthens and increases the behavior uh, that treats of, uh, that uh, threats of use of undesirable consequences or the termination or withdrawal of undesirable consequences. Let me give you a couple of examples to understand what is positive and negative behavior. Now positive behavior is you know giving recognition and attention to an employee for the successful completion of a task could be an example of positive reinforcement. So you give them attention, you, you congratulate him you know so that his behavior uh, that same behavior will repeat know so that's strengthening that positive behavior so negative reinforcement is now let's say getting uh, busy when the supervisor walks through the area so so you want to you know um, uh, prevent termination you know so that means let's say supervisor doesn't like you and then you just show that you're busy when supervisor walk through you know you know you're showing this you know um, uh, because um, uh, not that you know you you want to um, you know really work uh, sh get really busy but to show that you know b you know prevent from termination you know so negative reinforcement is really a form of social blackmail you know so because the person will behave in a certain way in order not to uh, be punished so that's called negative reinforcement. So you're going to avoid that. But it strengthens every time the supervisor walks in, you know, you, you're going to do show this behavior. So so it's negatively strengthening that behavior. So that's called a negative uh, reinforcement. Um, another example I can give you about negative reinforcement. A lot of students find it very difficult to understand the difference between uh, negative reinforcement and punishment. But it's two different things. So when you're in a driving in a heavy traffic is a negative uh, condition for most of us. So you leave home early than usual on morning, you know, usual one morning. And don't um, run into heavy traffic. 
um so then what will happen you enjoy that you know because you you can go early and you know you don't get it into heavy traffic then you can you know without um, uh, getting into heavy traffic you can go to office now e now what happen is next time also you leave early again next morning again to avoid the heavy traffic now your behavior of leaving home earlier is strengthened by the consequence of avoidance of heavy traffic so not because that you want to go to office early and start work but you are doing this one in order to avoid the heavy traffic that you are doing it so every time when you do that it strengthen your behavior because you are avoiding the heavy traffic you can reach office very fast um so if you don't like to drive in heavy traffic you do that we call it the heavy traffic is a negative reinforcer for your behavior you know so not because that you like to go to office early you are doing this one you know to only to avoid so every time you do that it strengthen your negative behavior you know or uh, uh, negative reinforcement it so now normally when you get it into the car you know if you start the vehicle and then when you start driving it get a buzz sound you know uh, you know very irritating buzz sound uh, then you just wear the seat belts you know. so most of the time i have seen some people don't like to wear the seat belts you know when they just go close by place um, but because they want to avoid that uh, irritating buzz sound you know they 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 wear the uh, seat belt you know so the see uh, the buzz sound is a negative reinforcer putting on the seat belt you know so it's a negative reinforcer it's not a punishment you know so don't misunderstand with uh confuse with um, negative reinforcement with punishment so punishment is you know if, if you are just thrown out from the you know vehicle or you know if it doesn't ignite um, the vehicle or doesn't start up you know so then it's it's by you know it's punishing you know so so it's uh, this negative reinforcement is completely different from punishment so some of the examples of negative reinforcement is you know now when you are walking on the road you know if a stone is lodged inside your shoe then you get a pain you know so what you do is every time you put a foot uh, you get a pain because it's uh, the stone is lodged inside the shoe you know so what you do is to avoid that negative reinforcement you just uh, take off the shoe and you know remove the stone and you know just put it back you know um so s another example i can give you some people um, uh, you know uh, s uh, do regular smoking you know uh, uh, because they get a negative emotional state you know so the neg negative emotional state um as negative reinforcer to smoking you know so so they keep on smoking you know to get get rid of of uh, you know stress negative emotions but but that strengthen you know smoking again and again so be they become heavy smokers you know um uh, uh, so leaving a movie theater if the movie theater is bad you know movie is bad you know so then it's because it's reinforced you know uh, when uh, insects uh, bites its itches um then you scratch it you know so you do you don't do scratch it because it's itches you know so it's a negative reinforcement every time it start itching you know you scratch it you know uh you know so scratching it is a negative rain so strengthen the uh, scratching you know itching is strengthen in the scratching um so as i told you that the 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 punishment um the meaning of punishment is uh, different from uh, negative reinforcement and uh, the meaning of rewards is different from positive reinforcement so punishment is anything that weaken the behavior and tend to decrease its subsequent uh, frequency you know uh, now let's say example uh, taking away certain organizational privileges from a manager who has a poor performance record could be thought as a punishment you know um so that you are taking off the privileges you know is a punishment you know so, uh, so sometimes uh, you misunderstand this punishment with um, negative reinforcement just because a supervisor criticize and associate and think um, it is a punishment it is not necessarily case unless the behavior that uh, preceded the criticism weakens or decrease uh, its subsequent frequency you know sometimes when you criticize associate in front of others you know what happen is um they get motivated you know so they because they get attention 
they get attention is a motivator you know so it reinforced their behavior so they they tend to do the same bad thing you know and then you criticize again in front of others and they get more and more attention you know so it strengthens so instead of weakening it strengthens so uh, so criticizing in front of people other people um, you know you might think it's your punishing but Uh, sometimes it can happen it is negatively reinforcing a behavior you know so every day the boss calls and you know say nimal the office assistant you know you didn't do that you didn't do that you know so everyone here in the office and uh, nimal get attention now every employee knows whether nimal has come today or not because if he's getting scolded that you know that nimal is there you know so so nimal get more and more attention from the employees and he feel that um, it's a motivator for him because everyone knows nimal now you know so then uh, then what the boss is doing is you know it's instead of punishing what he's doing is he's uh, negatively reinforcing uh, the nimal of his assistant you know so uh, sometimes you don't uh, you know you really missed it out you don't understand Uh, the idea behind the punishment and negative reinforcement uh, you may have seen sometimes class teachers you know ask students you know when you are in lower grades uh, if you don't bring the textbooks uh, you know the teacher will ask you to stand out in the corridor you know as a punishment uh, the what teacher thinks it's a punishing you know yes it can be could be sometimes you know if the a uh, child find um, embarrassed when other teachers walks in the corridor or the friends walk in the corridor you know ask what has happened and then you have to explain that but if um, if it is a balcony area you know very nice area you know so when you just go out there and you see the birds and then you can see the whole school you know and if you really enjoy the scenery and you know standing up there rather than listening to that boring uh, you know uh, lecture or whatever it is you know then what will happen is it straight reinforce that student you know so every time you ask them to um, uh, go out and stand out um, you know uh, in the corridor a student reinforce you know the rudens behavior reinforce so next day also he doesn't bring the uh, you know um, uh, book you know so he stand out in the corridor just imagine you know if you just go out and have a cup of tea from the canteen you know during that period you know so it will really reinforce him so every time in there is a class you know so he will not bring the book for that subject so he knows that the teacher will ask him to stand out in the corridor so that it's reinforce his strength so the meaning of punishment you need to properly understand uh, sometimes you think you are punishing children but actually what you are doing is negatively reinforcing them you know so this is what you need to know about you know the social psychology research in this area of behavior modification because otherwise these tools you are using it without knowingly in appropriate ways you know so instead of um, uh, weakening the behavior what you are doing is you are strengthening a negative behavior of a person so you got to carefully use these ideas you know uh, on uh, everyday in managing people and you know modifying their behaviors now use of punishment is a very complex phenomenon and must be carefully defined and used severe the punishment the greater the um, side effects such as hate and revenge so in order to succeed punishment must be used in a ordinary orderly orderly and rational manner and not too often uh, it should be used with skills and concerns for human dignity it can be useful in behavior management so now in countries like united states you cannot physically punish a child you know so you can call the police you know and the parents are question if they physically punish so now these type of things are there in us you know so that um, you know because it's a low context culture that people has that ability to communicate things by words so the parents can explain uh, what is good behavior and what is bad behavior to the child in very clearly so therefore it's it's logical that you can't physically punish you know because in that culture it's a low context culture so that they can you know you know probably explain to the child you know what is a good behavior and the bad behavior so so the child knows it then you know so if if a child has a bad behavior instead of physically punish you might ask them to say you know just stand there and go there and you know whatever it is you know and uh, 
uh, you know, try to do that behavior modification in different ways, you know. So this is what in happening in U.S., but it's very hard, uh, you know, sometimes um, the same ideas can be, as, uh, you know, use it in other countries like Sri Lanka, you know, the, the cultures are different and then, you know, the Sri Lankan culture is slightly more towards high context culture so that the people does not have the right ability to communicate their, uh, you know, idea by words, you know, so it's, you know, it's, there is a component that is, which is pre-programmed and, you know, when you punish the child, even child doesn't know for what you have punished and, you know, they ask mom, you know, why did you hit me, physically punish me? And then um, the mom said, you know, you should know this, you know, this is a bad behavior, but you have not told them what is good behavior and the bad behavior. So that's whose fault it is, yours fault, not the child's fault, you know. So therefore, um, it's very important, these ideas, when you're using across different cultures, you know, so it's not only that, um, you know, what matters is, you know, the, the legal framework, everything comes up in different countries based on um, uh, their culture, their values, beliefs, and, you know, ideologies, you know. So therefore, um, the things vary from country to country, but you need to get a better idea about this punishment and, you know, the difference between the punishment and the negative reinforcement. So let me show you a small video clip um, for your better understanding. We know from research that getting positive feedback is very important to learning. And that if you get some negative feedback and some criticism, for example, from your teacher, that's okay, but you have to get a lot of positive feedback too, much more positive than negative, to make it a rewarding learning experience. Shaping the behavior of children is of particular concern to parents. What do you say? Thank you. But are they reinforcing the right kinds of behavior? Um, emotional behavior can be reinforced and can be conditioned. And um, we can see these patterns emerging in childhood. So every time you have a tantrum, your mother is really nice to you and says, oh, you know, here, you know, let me help you do this. And, you know, we'll go off and have ice cream and, and everything will be better. You know, on the one hand, this is a very sympathetic reaction that I think could be very useful in a whole host of contexts. But there's also another way in which that reinforces that emotional behavior. And you might find that the child is starting to have these kinds of outbursts more often. And that's learned emotional reaction. What do you want to show me? What do you want to do? Another way behavior can be strengthened is through negative reinforcement. You want a cookie? Negative reinforcement is, hands down, the most difficult concept for students to get their minds around. They think it means punishment, because that's how it's used out there on the street. But reinforcement is always an event that strengthens the behavior that precedes it. What I tell students is that keep in mind the reinforcement part. Reinforcement is referring to making a response more likely to occur in the future. Punishment makes it less likely. The negative comes from removing some unpleasant state of affairs. And that's a good thing when that happens. So if you're let out of the room that you were sent to because you misbehave, that's negative reinforcement. It strengthens your having been good when you're in the timeout room. And what about punishment? It is not necessary to physically punish a child in order to produce a socialized child with a good conscience and high character. You don't have to. Punishment is associated with negative feelings. And so while the individual who is punished may not engage in that behavior while the punisher is around. So in one sense, it may accomplish the goal that a couple of things happen with those negative feelings, that the child may uh, develop resentment toward the parent or fear toward them. 
and also negative feelings toward themselves. They may think that, well, I'm a bad person. There are other ways to correct behavior than through punishment. You can do it by chiding, deprivation of privileges, saying that was not a nice thing to do, as Asian parents do. The idea is that parents make everything possible to convey some general expectations which are present in a situation by saying, oh, such a shame, you, you, you didn't know, know this, for example. Uh, meaning that, oh, you should be aware of, say, general norms, social expectations, and so on. But having said that, a spank on the bottom is not a traumatic event because the child understands what that means. Punishment just requires communication to the child that these are the behaviors I wish you to do and these are the behaviors I want you to suppress and words and deprivation of privileges and mild shaming are effective. So, so what are the ways and means we can use this uh, behavior modification? Uh, what are the methods we can use to do the behavior modification? There are altogether, you know, four ways we can do the behavior modification. One is reinforcement, so this has positive and negative. Another method is punishment, and the third method is extinction. So extinction is nothing but it's ignoring, you know. So what happened when you do uh, positive reinforcement? So consequence is introduced and the behavior increase and maintain. So um, then in the negative reinforcement, consequence is removed, but behavior increase and maintain, you know. In punishment case, uh, the behavior always decreases. So in extinction, that no consequences behavior decreases so you don't respond uh, to the person you know so now let's say the child asks you know a father uh, a cookie a father cookie you know so child is asking for a cookie but if father doesn't respond you know after some time you know child's behavior child you know extinction you know, so father ignores uh, you know, child's behavior reduce, you know, so the child will not ask again, you know, father a cookie, you know, so, uh, so like that, you know, so you may have seen sometimes when the, um, uh, some strikes happens, you know, um, like railways and all that, you know, and the sometimes government doesn't respond, you know, so they ignore, you know, so what will happen is after sometimes that behavior decreases and, you know, they come to an agreement and they say, you know, okay, we are going to call off the strike, you know, and like that, you know. So, um, so these are the different ways that, you know, we can, you know, change the uh, human behavior, you know, so behavior modification. Now, positive reinforcement is a p particular, you know, behavior strengthen and consequence of experiencing a positive condition. Now, let me give you a couple of examples uh, using a hungry rat. Uh, and now let's say we created a small experiment using a you know cage uh, and put up a bar and that bar you are giving them an electric shock you know uh, uh, so like, like a paddle you know uh, so you put a hungry rat into this electro you know cage and um, and he has to press a bar so when you press a bar you receive the food you know the food is a positive condition for a hungry rat the rat presses the bar again and again and receives the food. So, so rat's behavior of pressing the bar is strengthened by the consequence of receiving the food. So that's an example of a positive reinforcement. So now you program in a little different way, you know, as to explain the negative reinforcement. Um, now to avoid that negative condition only, uh, the now the rat is uh, putting uh, you know you know uh, you know pressing the bar now rat is placed in the cage and immediately received a mild electric shock on the feet so so the shock is negative condition on the rat the rat presses the bar and um, the shock stops you know 
so the rat received another uh, yeah another shock uh, presses the bar again and again and again and its uh, shock stops you know so so the rat's behavior of pressing the bar is strengthened by the negative consequence of stopping the shock electric shock so then um, rat will keep on pressing the bar in order to avoid that uh, mind uh, mild electric shock you know so that's called a negative uh, negative reinforcement so they do this to av avoid negative condition you know the consequence of stopping or avoiding the negative condition so now we reprogram this cage to give a punishment um, to weaken the behavior you know uh, so give them a negative condition uh, rat presses the bar in the cage and receive a mild electric shock on its feet uh, the shock is a negative condition for the rat the rat presses the bar again and again receive a shock the rat's behavior of pressing the bar is weakened by the consequence of receiving a shock so now the rat will not press the bar because he know it's a negative condition of receiving the shock you know so that uh, behavior will decrease after some time and you know just goes off you know because um, because it's a negative um, electric shock that he's receiving so extinction is a particular behavior is weakened by a consequence if not experiencing a positive condition or st uh, stopping a negative condition now we'll reprogram this one a rat presses the bar in the cage and nothing happens you know now this rat knows you know earlier the rat is learned when you press the bar something will happen now in this case is nothing happened neither a positive or negative condition exists for the rat the rat presses the bar again and again nothing happens the rat's behavior of pressing the bar is weakened by the consequence of not experiencing anything positive or stopping anything negative so what will happen is rat after some time he will not you know press the bar because there is no positive or negative experience that is received so we call it extinction so we um, uh, so c so when you introduce that contingent application you know um, uh, the positive um, reinforcement happens you know the rewards you know and um, it's a uh, when you decreases the behavior then we call it a negative uh, it's a punishment you know so anything increases the behavior you know uh, is uh, either positive uh, reinforcement or negative reinforcement in this chart you can see the difference between the punishment and the positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement now now what are the reinforcement and punishment methods you know the principles of learning you know uh, the use of punishment um, now the meaning of punishment is as you know it's very complex and it's you know sometimes of often used uh, a lot of people rarely understood the meaning of punishment and it's very important to properly administer the punishment and to have a proper guideline for discipline in the organization you know uh, now let me we'll, we are going to analyze the money as a reinforcer and i'm going to look at you know issues of time in the reinforcer and non-financial rewards such as social recognition and attention uh, performance feedbacks and need to evaluate all of them you know and uh, so let's look at uh, schedule of reinforcement in the next slide uh, now when you're reinforcing an employee you know you can do a continuous reinforcement of fixed uh, reinforcement fixed ratio or a variable ratio where reinforcement of fixed interval reinforcement and uh, variable um, uh, interval reinforcement you know so so these are the methods we can use it for as a schedule of reinforcement so it matters when it comes to uh, behavior modification now let's look at you know the fixed ratio reinforcement so the fixed ratio reinforcement is um, such example I can give you about in Sri Lankan Airlines you know um, you know um, uh, frequent flyer programs like you know you get the flight miles you know so getting a free flight after accumulating a x number of flight flight miles you know so that's called a fixed ratio so that means when you travel you know if you register for uh, you know uh, this program in uh, frequent flyer program 
you know what will happen is it, it accumulate you know each time you travel the number of miles in as a points you know so after accumulating certain amount of points you know in on a ratio you received a free t a ticket you know so that's called a fixed ratio reinforcement you know um, factory work uh, paid on piece work paying a commission and getting a bonus for every x number of items so it's like you know let's say factory worker prepare you know every time five items you know he get a fixed commission you know so that's called a fixed ratio reinforcement now variable ratio of reinforcement is like slot machine at the gambling casino so you just put the coins sometimes you don't get it sometimes you get a good money big money you know so it's a variable ratio so the variable ratio reinforcement is really motivator for people so that that's what you know gambling can attract uh, a lot of people because of the variable ratio reinforcement you know uh, you know fixed ratio reinforcement um, sometimes uh, does not motivate the people you know now now let's say if you're giving an increment of 10 percent every year the employees calculate if i could stay for this company for five years this is what i'm going to get it you know so then um, that's not going to be a real motivator for an employee you know now since the sports games um you know variable number of strokes to the finish hole of a golf you know um, to uh, get the ball in you know it's a it's a motivator variable so n not everyone can put like a you know, five strokes or six strokes you know reach the golf hole you know so variable number of throws to get the basketball in the loop is also a variable um, reinforcement uh, so you, you sh at once you can't just put it into the basketball loop now in the case of um, fly fishing um, now people who go to fishing you know they just put the rod and then um, every time you put the rod you know you know you don't catch the fish you know so you have to try out fair several times you know and when you do that only you're going to get the fish catch the fish so it's a variable ratio reinforcement um, so next uh, we will look at we looked at the fixed ratio and the variable ratio and then we looked at the fixed interval and variable interval now fixed interval um, uh, uh, reinforcement is getting a paycheck at the end of the week or end of the month you know so it's a fixed interval you know uh, looking at your watch during the lecture until the end of the lecture it's a fixed interval reinforcement so picking up the paper in the morning after it has been delivered at the same time every day seven o'clock let's say uh, paper man is delivering the paper so it's a fixed interval reinforcement then you get the variable interval uh, uh, reinforcement mm, uh, um, you know speed traps on highways you know the cops are there in the highways you know in the variable uh, time uh, schedule, uh, variable uh, days, you know, the uh, variable times, you know, because otherwise you can avoid it easily, you know, um, and fish, uh, fishing, a uh, fish may be caught at intervals at approximately every two minutes, every hour or every two days, you know, so uh, when you're doing a drug testing in the office, you know, um, we can do it on the variable interval, so uh, so otherwise if you do it in fixed interval you know every you know every third day you are doing that you know uh, drug testing is in that day he will not consume the drug and come you know so you have to do this in the variable in, uh, intervals in order to um, really uh, modify the behavior you know so uh, you can see that these are the ways and means that you know you can uh, do behavior modification now you will understand why some people are motivated to buy lotteries and gambling you know so if you ask if, if I ask you to explain you know why these people are playing gambling and you know buy uh, you know uh, lotteries you know so the reason is uh, it's a it's a one means you know it's a variable ratio it's motivating you know so you get a big money sometimes mm -hmm sometimes nothing you know and the other thing is you know it's not only that you know why these uh, you know people get addicted to the 
uh, and um, gambling you know because of this variable ratio reinforcement and uh, why it is getting popular and people again buy more and more lotteries and gambling because only in the behavior science the winners communicate you know so so winners go and tell others you know i want to gamble you know i i want a lottery you know so then others think you know every time a person takes a lottery you know so he wins it you know so only the winners communicate losers don't communicate you know so therefore other people think every time you take a lottery you're going to win the lottery you know so so therefore in that idea you know they go and buy another lottery you know so that's what you know people your people are getting into the game you know that's the behavior side of the science you know because the uh, losing part you don't see the communication you know so they will not even go and tell their wife you know i lost that you know but when they win you know they go and communicate so y- you need to understand how things work in this world you know so if you look at you know this idea of organizational behavior you know as you can see from the 1900 pavlov's the russian uh, social psychologist pavlov's cl- classical condition then american social psychologist watson behaviorism and then you know skinner did lot of uh, you know operant conditioning studies which you have seen some of the videos now uh, luton's um, Uh, has done so a lot of approaches to our ob modification approach and albert bandura in you know introduced social learning theory in 1977 and then um, luthens again did a lot of work on 1985 um, and then um, you know to present you know there are a lot of research happening on uh, behavior modification and i have at- attached couple of uh, books and in organizational behavior modification practice um, so you can see from your uh, course model um, uh, co- uh, course web it is attached and also in my tiny url site which i have shared with you earlier it is there uh, now you might ask what are the steps of uh, behavioral performance management or organization behavior modification uh, first what you need to do is you know you need to identify the performance behaviors so what brings performance you know so some organization maybe punctuality attendance can bring performance another organization that may not bring performance so then you do a measurement of behavior then you analyze functional analysis of behavior you know uh, you know we discussed that one uh, antecedents uh, consequences and you know target behavior so the abc analysis you perform and then develop the intervention strategy so intervene if the behavior is not acceptable you know then you can use positive reinforcement strategies and or, co- or you can use punishment and positive reinforcement strategies you know and then as a last step you evaluate and ensure performance improvement you know so these are the five steps that you need to do it you know let's say if employees uh, uh not punctual they don't come to office on time they always late you know so then you just see whether that late uh, coming uh, you know create a performance in the organization impact on the performance on the organization so then you identify the performance behavior so if it is impacting the performance that you will not be able to conduct the meetings in morning stand out stand up meetings and things like that then it impacts that behavior then you got to look at you know uh, you know to modify and then you measure that behavior so what is the impact what is the impact you know how much of money that you are losing it you know uh, projects getting delayed and all that you know so then you do a functional analysis you know so then you introduce some sort of a you know uh, method you know so now let's say uh, you give them a reward you know so then you give them a f- you know attendance reward you know punctual reward or you stand out in the uh, entrance and you know receive them in the morning and um, then you can observe that behaviors you know uh, you know uh, you know so that uh, after 8:30 if that is a time then you know you take this your attendance marking sheet into a manager's desk so that they have to come and mark in the manager's desk you know so 
so they get embarrassed sometimes when I mean when the manager see you are coming late so they might uh, you know um, so that's a strategy you can intervention strategy then they might decrease that behavior and then you know they get it to the right uh, you know uh, level of performance you know so so that's a punishment you know so or you, you know you might say you know um, if you come late for another three days consequently you know you're going to um, reduce some part of allowance or whatever it is you know or you can use a positive reinforcement strategy that you know you tell them okay uh, i'm going to give you a attendance um, you know uh, people come early i'm going to give you a uh, you know 100 rupees you know um, you know uh, when you come early you know so the positive reinforcement strategy you know so so they try to come early to get that money you know but let's say if you do it in um, you know fixed interval that means every f month the first day you are standing there and the third day you are standing there and the sixth day so then it will not work because they know that you know it's a fixed interval and that day only they'll come early the rest of the days they may come little later you know so you have to do it in the variable uh, you know or you know intervals um, so you can use positive strategies reinforcement strategies or punishment or combination of positive and punish positive reinforcement and punishment to do that so after doing that you evalu do a evaluation and find out it has improved the punctuality so if it is improved the punctuality and attendance um, then you know your intervention strategy has worked out if it is not that means your intervention strategy has not worked out you know so you got to relook that again you know so that's the whole idea to modify the employees behavior of late coming and get them into the normal ways of uh, you know coming early into office so it's very harder that when when the when the behavior change uh, when you're trying to bring it back into the right behavior it's very difficult you know so th therefore you have to apply this behavior so but uh, that again depends on your organization and if there's no problem just leave it like that because you can have a flexi time you can have different other ways of doing it uh, you know better you do a lot of other things because you can respect the employees lifestyle so if you respect the employees lifestyle only you can get the best out of the employee here I'm going to put it you know the the um, so some of the research done by professor Carroll um, um, on mindset is a, is a psychology professor um, uh, uh, he, she said, you know, there is about two mindset, fixed mindset and a growth mindset, you know. Um, you know she has done studies with students. Uh, students, uh, you know, subjects randomly reinforce um, for their ability to solve tasks. Um, um, so she said, you know, you are really smart at this, you know, uh, led to, you know, a fixed mindset, you know. So um, uh, what happened is, um, um, so when you when you start, um, uh, you know, uh, student subject uh, randomly reinforced from their ability to solve the problems, um, and when you say that you are really smart at this, you know, and it created a fixed mindset for them, you know. Subsequently, when you given them another challenging task they didn't want to do that because they have a fear of failure uh, so they think they will not be able to meet the expectation you know um, okay so um, so they did not enjoy you know have fun you know yeah subsequent so importantly their performance decreases over the time you know so when the people when they had the fixed mindset their performance decreases over the time you know okay but when you um, uh, randomly reinforce their effort on tasks um, and you tell them you must uh, have to work really hard at these and then you created the child's growth mindset so when you create the growth mindset um, that that gives you exactly opposite results you know so then the students started taking about challenging work um, and uh, they, they started doing a lot of good work, you know. So this, uh, she identified, Prof. identified the 
difference between a fixed mindset and the growth mindset she said in his uh, her book you know so i attached that book in the course web um uh the when you have more and more gr- uh, you know a uh, growth mindset you can take many challenges and you know uh, overcome those challenges and she has studied um, the uh, the one of the best uh, car racing people and uh, and those who are really doing well had the growth mindset i mean they have learned from their mistakes and you know keep improving their you know uh, you know the the drive you know so that's what you know they have just done so that's a little bit of um, advantage of having creating growth mindset of people uh, than having the fixed mindset so use of organizational behavior uh, so i'll just show you before i move into that i'll show you the uh, professor carol's small video Some students have a fixed mindset. They believe that their basic intelligence is just a fixed trait. You have a certain amount and that's that. It makes them very concerned with how much they have. Before they do a task, they think, am I going to look smart? Am I not going to look smart? And they base their uh, activities on whether their intelligence will be shown to advantage. Other students think that's wrong. my intelligence is something that i can develop my whole life through through passion and studying and education so then we decided what if we taught students the growth mindset we developed an eight session workshop uh, half of the students in the study got this eight session workshop of study skills and a growth mindset the other half got all study skills St- the study skills were great we thought they were motivating they did no good whatsoever wow. um, to the students because they didn't have the motivation to put them into practice for those students their grades continued to decline but for the students who got the growth mindset lesson which is your brain is like a muscle it gets stronger with use Uh, they learn that every time they learn something new their brain forms new connections over time they could increase their intellectual skills they were told uh, nobody laughs at babies and says how dumb they are they just haven't learned yet well they read an article about this and there was lots of discussion heated animated discussion um and they were taught how to apply this to their school work at the end of the se- semester they showed a significant rebound in their grades and the teachers could pick out which students were in the growth mindset even though they didn't know they didn't know there were even two workshops ross bentley um kind of a world renowned racing car coach read my book and contacted me he saw the connection between a growth mindset and optimal performance uh these uh, top races last for many of them last for hours and in the course of the event mistakes are inevitable the difference between a winning driver and a losing driver is what you do with those mistakes uh w- over the course of our conversations we developed some collaborative work to see whether in fact racing drivers who have a growth mindset um are able to enter the zone and stay in the zone even after they've made mistakes it's so important in the business world for people at all levels to believe in growth the growth of skills to be able to admit mistakes and overcome them Uh you can't keep up with this changing world if you uh can't grow and can't learn. So that's one very important application. But the other is you can't be a mentor, a good mentor without having a growth mindset. And so it tells you how 
one group is really going around the world curious, curious to learn, and the other is going around the world wanting to feel smart. When it comes to your brain, don't lock down. Keep those neurons connecting. So what are the uses of OB modifications? So application of behavioral modification is in areas of employee productivity and performance. So in order to get the best performance and productivity, you may, you may apply these OB beha behavior modification theories uh, to get the better performance. Absentism. To reduce absentism, you can use these behavioral modification strategies. Safety and accident prevention those also we can use it sales performance in order to get the sales performance we can reinforce them positively uh, we can use these strategies uh, to do that you know so employee turnover to reduce the employee turnover also we can use them these OB behavior modification strategies okay so that ends my um, uh, lecture so thank you very much um, uh, See you in another lecture. Thank you.